It's one of the most iconic features of the French capital. Not the Eiffel Tower or Notre Dame Cathedral, but the Paris Metro. Now, call me a nerd, but the Paris Metro is one of my favorite features about the city, and there's so many fun facts to know about it. But how has the Metro evolved since it was first created some 120 years ago? And how is it dealing with current challenges like overcrowded trains or strikes? Join us for this episode of French Connections Plus, where we head underground and discover the Paris Metro. With its awesome station names, Art Nouveau signs, and at times great views of the city, the Paris Metro is a fascinating place of discovery and also a great gateway into the capital. The first line was opened in 1900, 37 years after the Tube in London, but four years before the New York City subway. And here in Paris, it was an instant hit. The Metro is operated by the RATP. Its logo is a stylized version of the map of the capital that you can see on Metro tickets, for instance. The RATP is a state-owned public transport operator for Paris and the greater Ile-de-France region. It operates trams and buses, as well as part of the suburban train network Work, the RER. Today we're just going to focus on the Metro, and there's certainly a lot to talk about. Over the years it's turned into a massive, sprawling network. The word Metro, used in dozens of countries around the world, comes from the Paris Metropolitan. The first line was inaugurated on July 19, 1900, during the Exposition Universelle. These days, there are 14 lines stretching more than 200 kilometers. With over 1.5 billion users a year, it's the second busiest metro system in Europe after Moscow. The metro is a lifeline, connecting the farthest reaches of Paris to the city's bustling center. There are over 300 stations, including some famous ones, like Châtelet Léal, regarded as the largest metro station in the world. Stops are often named after historic places, events, or famous people, like Montparnasse Bienvenue, named after a neighborhood, and engineer Fulgence Bienvenue, the inventor of the metro. More recent stations have been named after women, like singer Barbara. Kids taking the metro will be familiar with Serge, a rabbit who warns you not to get your hands stuck in the door. The Paris metro is famous for its art and decor, and many stations have themes. Arène Métier is designed to look like a submarine, and at Bastille, the walls depict the historic French Revolution. And then there are a few ghost stations, which haven't been used in years and are now closed to the public. Traces of the Metro's rich history. A lot of public transport systems have their downsides. The tube in London is claustrophobic. The rats in the New York subway are terrifying. As for Paris, we have lots and lots of strikes. Metro workers have ground the system to a halt for weeks in order to protect their hard-earned gains. People still remember massive shutdowns in 1995 and more recently in 2019. There's nothing like a good metro strike to make you realize how much you really need it. And on top of that, the trains are getting more and more crowded. And that was especially true before COVID. In the five years in the lead up to the lockdown, the system was having to deal with an extra 200,000 people a day. Part of the reason is because more and more people are leaving their cars at home, either for environmental reasons or to beat the notoriously bad traffic in Paris. And that means that at times people can be squeezed like sardines. Sometimes there are up to four people in one square meter and forecasts suggest that more and more people are gonna be using public transport. But never fear, Paris is already working on a solution. It's a massive development project on a mission to revolutionize public transport in Ile-de-France, the region where Paris is located. It's called Le Grand Paris Express, the Greater Paris Express Network. The project will see the extension of two existing metro lines and the creation of four state-of-the-art new ones, 100% automated, 100% accessible. All in all, 200 kilometers of new tracks, the equivalent of four channel tunnels, and 68 new stations. 
Authorities have promised the improved network will minimize the amount of time people spend on public transport and allow people to go from one suburb to another without going through the capital. This thanks to a super metro ring line that goes all the way around Paris. La ligne 15 sud à la, à la gare darc cachan va permettre euh, aux habitants du, du secteur et aux Cachanais en particulier euh, d'aller à la Défense sans passer par Paris. Donc euh, on, on s'attend à avoir une fréquentation très très importante euh, sur cette gare de l'ordre de 100 000 voyages par jour euh, lors de la mise en service. With over 12 million people living in a 12,000 square kilometer area, Île-de-France is the most densely populated region of France. While those living in the capital have access to rapid public transport, it's a different story for the millions living in suburbs outside the city limits. They often have to come into Paris to make a connection, which can saturate the network. The Grand Paris Express is a mammoth project with over 100 mammoth construction sites underway that are completely transforming the urban landscape. La station va partir donc d'une mur en pierre ici et ira jusqu'au mur rouge là-bas. Et donc on a presque 120 mètres de long de future gare. The Grand Paris Express is a technological challenge, requiring a dozen massive tunnel diggers called a tunnelier in French. With an average speed of 12 meters a day, they're racing against the clock. The aim was to inaugurate the new network in 2030 with sections available for the 2024 Olympic Games. This means some construction sites work late into the night, a headache for those living around them. Le soir, on a envie d'être tranquille. On peut entendre les marteaux piqueurs, la centrale à béton euh, qui est au pied des, des immeubles, euh, le bruit des camions. Moi, franchement, je ne dors même plus carrément dans ma chambre parce qu'elle donne directement sur le puits. Je suis obligée de dormir avec mes enfants et euh, je dors très, très mal. Il y a des gens ici dans notre immeuble, ils sont carrément en dépression. Et il y en a carrément, ils sont partis. The Grand Paris Express has seen delays in construction, compounded by the pandemic. On top of that, the cost of the ambitious project has been going up. Originally set at 22 billion euros, the budget has gone over 38 billion euros. For many people, it's a price worth paying for improved public transport. So there are some big changes ahead, but the Paris Metro has already seen some major transformations over the years. More and more lines are becoming automatic. Even the beloved Metro Ticket has had a series of facelifts. The emblematic Metro Ticket has been around since the very beginning, but it could soon be a thing of the past because Metro authorities have started cutting down on the little white piece of cardboard with a black line down the back. They're slowly being replaced by electronic cards like this one, sort of like the Oyster card in London. And this is tragic news for fans of the Metro Ticket, like myself. I must admit, when I was a kid, I had a collection of Metro Tickets because there's something very satisfying about the Metro Ticket. It's sound, it's shape, it's size. But no panic, though. While it may be an endangered species, the Metro Ticket is not going to disappear completely. What is going to disappear, however, are the packs of 10 tickets sold together called a carnet. What's certain, though, is that the Metro Ticket has gone through all sorts of transformations over the years, starting with its color. It's been pink, cream, green, bright yellow, aqua, purple, and more recently white, a color for each era. In many ways, the metamorphosis of the metro ticket over the years reflects gradual societal changes in Paris and France. Take ticket discounts, for instance. The first were for wounded soldiers following the First World War, proof that the violence of the Great War profoundly marked French society. After the Second World War, the baby boom was reflected by a discount for families with three kids or more, la famille nombreuse. But the ticket itself has experienced a technological revolution that mirrors change in the country. Initially, tickets were manually punched by an employee called a poinçonneur. Poinçonner is to punch. This was made famous by a Serge Gainsbourg song, Le Poinçonneur des Lilas. Je fais des trous, des petits trous, encore des petits trous. In the late 60s, the metro ticket became magnetic, and these poinçonneurs were replaced by machines, the beginning of automation in many ways. And it wasn't that long ago. Quand j'étais petite, je prenais le métro, et il y avait la dame au guichet qui effectivement trouait les, les tickets de métro. Je m'en souviens très, très bien. And now the ticket is going electronic. 
but many people are attached to the paper metro ticket, which has been around since the metro was launched in 1900. It's much more than a vulgar transport ticket. It's a bookmark, a handy thing to write your phone number on, or potentially a little frog. It's hyper drôle because que mon copain il passe son temps à me faire des petites grenouilles avec le ticket de métro, et qu'il est dégoûté que ça disparaisse parce qu'il pourra plus me faire de grenouilles. While some are nostalgic, others see the gradual removal of the ticket as a sign of progress. Keep in mind there's an environmental element here. A cardboard ticket takes about two years to disintegrate, and one out of every 10 tickets is lost. Things really have changed over the years. I even remember when you used to be able to smoke in the metro. Well, some change is good, Jeannie. True. All right, you sent in your questions, like Matteo Demita, who asks, if I ever get back to Paris, will my unused metro tickets still work? They certainly will, Matteo, so make sure you hold on to your metro tickets, but don't keep them too close to your cell phone or a credit card, because that might demagnetize them, in which case you have to go to a teller to get them to work again. That actually happened to me this morning. Next, Soraya wants to know if you can catch the metro at any time or if they stop running overnight? Unfortunately, the metro does not run all night. It runs until about quarter to one during the week and an hour later on the weekends. And there's nothing worse than missing the last metro or taking the first one, to be honest. <laughs> Soraya had another quick question, this time about buskers. Do metro stations have a vibrant busking culture? They certainly do. In fact, metro authorities hold auditions so that musicians can busk in designated areas. And then you have the unauthorized buskers, too. And they're not just the ubiquitous accordion players. Some are really good and have gone on to have incredible careers like Kizia Jones or the French legends Alain Souchon and Renaud. Love it or hate it, the Paris Metro does have its charms, including its musicians. Even its weird smell can be somewhat endearing, and it's a great way to zip around the capital. That's all the time we have for today's show about the Paris Metro. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can tweet your own questions at Flo Vilmanau or reach out on social media. And we'll see you soon for another episode of French Connections Plus. France 24, every art form. Liberté, égalité, actualité.